Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about working with our cranking, post start, and warm up enrichment fuel in our AEM Pro software. So when we want to fire up the engine, we're going to be working with our cranking fuel trim and we're going to simply move the injector pulse width up or down to get our cranking fuel to where we want to be so we have our engine firing up as quick as possible. Now once the engine fires off, we're going to have our post start fuel and that's going to add a whole bunch of fuel for a brief period of time, usually about between 5 to maybe 30 seconds after the engine started. And then as the engine is warming up and exits its post start enrichment, it's going to be using the warm up enrichment and that's going to allow it to have a long term fuel adder, again as the coolant temperature is coming up to operating temp, typically about 150, 160, 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to be showing you how this process works and I'm going to be showing you how the different tables are going to interact and what you can expect when you go in and you tune them. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be taking a look at working with our starting fuel, our post start, and our warm-up enrichment. Now, the first thing we're going to do to take a look at how this is all going to work, we're going to jump up here into our two icons. One's going to be related to engine start. The other's going to be here related to our advanced engine start. So under engine start, we click on this, we're going to find that we have our crank injection timetable. This is going to be providing us our injector pulse width under cranking conditions. And we can see here, if we look at our value, the fuel injector number one pulse, this is going to be what we're going to be delivering when we're actually cranking the engine over. We can see that it's going to show 12,100 microseconds. Now traditionally when we're talking about uh, working with the injector pulse width, we're going to be talking about milliseconds. So in order to convert microseconds to milliseconds, we're simply going to move a decimal place over three. So then if we're going to be talking about milliseconds, it's going to be 12.1, not 12,100 going to be again in units of microseconds. So um, AEM is a little bit goofy the way that they reference the, uh, the injector pulse width in the system. So always move a decimal place over three. It's going to give you the uh, approximate uh, millisecond value it's delivering. Now looking at the table here, um, we can find that it's going to be based on a raw value here in our axis. So from 0 to 255, that's going to be a scaling amount. And then we find that we have it also going to be based on throttle position from 0 to 100%. So the purpose of this table, again, is going to be giving us the pulse width on uh, under cranking. And if we look here at this particular value, we can see that my throttle is open approximately 40%. So if we look, I can get all the way off the throttle. Now I'm at zero throttle. If I get all the way on the throttle here and go full throttle, we can see that the injector pulse width actually went 